And although I knew labor was gonna be painful, I kind of had this hope at the back of my mind na, baka naman hindi ganun kasakit. Baka okay lang yung mga nanay. Nope! Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I know ang tagal ko nang hindi nagsisit down vlog. Bakit nga ba? Hindi ko alam. I've just been super busy from the pregnancy to then giving birth. And, you know, kahit na na-share ko na yung gender reveal, yung baby shower namin, lahat-lahat na. Ang tagal ko nang hindi nag-gaganitong vlog. So, finally today, I have a little bit of time to share with you my birth story. Yes! Seven months postpartum. And you know, for a while I was thinking, that's a really bad idea to talk about your birth story when your baby's already seven months old. But I realized that it's actually a good, it's a good time to do it. train of thought ko, mom brain. He woke up. Okay, Liam woke up and I'm gonna go and get him. Say hi, ya. Bagong gising face. <laughs> Why is your hair in your face like that? So, ayun nga. I was thinking at the beginning na it's probably not a good idea to talk about my birth story seven months after giving birth because Liam is now seven months old. I realized also that in hindsight, Everything is clearer now that I'm now that I'm seven months postpartum. Kasi wala na ako nung tainted romance of like, wow, I gave birth to a human being. And wala na rin ako yung medyo parang it was so hard because it's so fresh pa. Parang ngayon mas mas objective na siguro yung thoughts ko on my birth story. Iba na. Do you want to hear what Mama went through to give birth to you? You big baby, literal na big baby. He is now almost 10 kilos at 7 months old. Can you believe it? Rico? Okay, so, what were the original plans or expectations? Obviously, the original plan and not expectation, and actually not really expectation, I made sure to not expect too much from my birth process. As in, at the end of it, I was just, at the beginning of it, I was just thinking, you know, I praise God as long as my baby is healthy and as long as I'm able to give birth to him normally, healthily, okay na ako. Noong una, nangangarap pa ako mag-home birth. But because of my history of anxiety and panic attacks, um, I decided against it because when I was doing my research, yung during the transition in your labor, right before you deliver, yun yung 10 cm, parang yun yung mga 8 to 10 centimeters ka na transition. Pag wala kang epidural, talagang mag activate yung fight or flight mode mo. And I know that my anxiety and panic attacks are really, really bad when my, when my fight or flight mode is turned on. So I just felt like it wouldn't be the safest thing to do. And... I wanted sana kung kaya ng hospital na natural birth. So, the hospital that I gave birth in, Makati Medical, has a lamaze room. So, basically, pwede ka mag-natural birth sa hospital mismo para if anything happens, you know, if something goes wrong, oh my gosh, of course, that's the last thing that you want to happen. But ako for me, more of like yung assurance na if I do get a panic attack, or biglang whatever, kailangan na kailangan ng doktor talaga, meron doon. That's what I was hoping for. But because of COVID, closed yung Lamaze rooms nila. So, that didn't happen. So, we were just hoping for like a normal de delivery and a healthy delivery. I did have my mind fixated on giving birth normally, and which I did. But <laughs> I was hoping now I'd give birth around 38 weeks. But I gave birth at 40 weeks exactly he stayed in there long huh buddy what ended up happening in those last few weeks before giving birth so on my 39th week my doctor was like okay you're still not giving birth and parang ilang beses ako nagkaka false alarm so no one knows this except our family and our super close friends my beshies but I actually went to the hospital twice on false alarms. As in, nagkakaroon ako ng really strong contractions. And I, my, the doctor said like, yeah, you're, you're getting really strong contractions. Pero nagsa-stop. So, he, kailangan pala para mag, 
really malaman mo na talagang nasa labor ka na, dapat yung strong contractions mo, um, it's a crescendo of the co- strong contractions. Tapos, dapat dire-diretso siya. As in, kailangan meron siyang, okay, I'm so bad at explaining this. Basta kailangan tuloy-tuloy siya para masabi mo na talagang nasa labor ka. Kasi kung hindi, you're not yet in labor. Your body's just practicing. So my body really practiced. And it was crazy. Like, one of those times na nagkaroon ako ng, I thought I was in labor already, Wancho was in taping. And since he was in taping, somebody else had to bring me to the hospital. Now, mind you, we were in the middle of the pandemic, right? And this person that brought me to the hospital ended up COVID positive. As in the next day, nalaman namin na COVID positive siya. And we were in the same car the whole time. You know, I had my mask. No, my mask was on pala and everything. Pero, grabe. As in, pray kami ng pray na, syempre, kabadong-kabado kami because I was pregnant. Um, But thank God, I didn't get COVID positive at that time. But yeah, it was a crazy experience. And I thought that was gonna be it. I thought like, for sure, in a few days, I'll give birth. But nope. My expected date, due date for Liam was July 2. And guess what date he was born? July 2. Isn't that crazy? I'll tell you the story in a bit. Okay, next. Okay, guys. Um, since Liam is gonna play, we're gonna record the vlog in his play area. Totally fine. This is what you're gonna get now. I'm so sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. This is really fun and I love my baby so much. Mama loves you. Ah! Wow. Oh, wow. Wanna say hi first? Say hiya! Hiya! Yeah! Okay. Go, honey. You can play. So, ayun nga. That's what happened in the last few weeks. I really honestly thought that I was gonna give birth on my 37th week because 37 weeks usually yung safe time for for uh, a person, a woman to give birth. So, akala ko 37th week mga nganak na ako, but lo and behold, 40th week checkup ko! I was still pregnant. So, all of my expectations, like, go away. As in, meron pa akong plan na I, I studied and I enrolled myself in this birthing class. Two birthing classes. One here in the Philippines that was obviously done just through Zoom and one internationally. Tapos, akala ko talaga, ang mangyayari ay makakapag, ano pa ako, labor pa ako sa bahay. Alam mo yun, I could take my sweet time and then my mo- water will break and then we'll go to the hospital, etc., etc. As in, may plano talaga kami. But that was not the case. So finally, ito na nga yung birth, birthday ni Liam. A day before Liam's birthday. So the date was July 1, 2021 and I was in Makati Medical Center with Dr. Joanne to really just for a checkup. And at this point, dahil 40 weeks pregnant na ako, my OB was like, girl, ano na? <laughs> but I love her so much. She's really such an amazing doctor. Kasi I've been reading up a lot on birth stories and parang ang daming mga doulas and other moms who would say na, you know, that doctors would pressure their patients into like getting induced or magpa-CS ka na, pag 40 weeks na, 39 weeks pa nga lang, pinupush na nilang magpa-CS. But my doctor and I were on the same page na I didn't want to force Liam out unless he really wants to get out already. So on my 40th week checkup, I went to Makati Med and it was a normal day. But since nga, Starting pa lang ng 36-37 weeks, lagi nang andun sa kotse namin yung hospital bag ko that, that we prepared beforehand. Just in case, you know. So we go in, and my doctor was like, choice. She, she does the ultrasound on me. She's like, girl, wala ka ng fluid. Wala ng fluid around the amniotic sac, which is kind of dangerous. And that would mean that I needed to be induced already. Kasi kung wala nang fluid, wala nang nagpo-protect kay Liam. And he might, you know, poop himself and might end up eating it. So many bad things could have happened. So, anyway, another... Ah! Liam! That's my, that's my fault. It's, it's his drum kasi that I'm placing my camera on. Sorry, Anna. So anyway, yun yan. Nakita ng doctor ko sa ultrasound na, oh, low amniotic fluid ka na. Wala ng fluid sa 
loob. So, she's like, that means we're gonna have to induce. Kasi, dangerously low na yung fluid mo. Meaning, wala ako no, my, my water broke situation. As in, hindi ko na-experience yon. And leading up, <laughs> okay, TMI. But leading up to this checkup, I really thought I was just peeing myself all the time. Because I was super heavily pregnant. Like, I'll show you a pic of how pregnant I was. I was so pregnant. And I ko hindi ko na lang makontrol kasi I, it, he was probably punching one of my kidneys or something and moving my organs around. So apparently, that's probably amniotic fluid na kasi nagli-leak na pala siya. So she saw that and God bless my doctor because she's really so, so good. I don't know if it's like practice for doctors pero she had another doctor check just to make sure that before she advised the next thing that I'm gonna tell you about of how the birth story came about, na talagang low amniotic fluid na ako. Another doctor came in and she confirmed na yes, she really is low, low amniotic fluid, which meant my doctor had to advise me to get induced. So yes, my labor was induced and this was July 1. My checkup was around 10.30. All of this happened between 10.30 till 12. And I was already admitted in the labor room at around 12.30. I got induced around that time. So 12.30 p.m. Nag-lunch pa ba ako? Hindi ko na matandaan. Nasi nag-panic na ako. Like, wait! Hindi ako ready. Akala ko mga kapag labor ako sa bahay. Ang dami nangyayari. As in, naka-t-shirt ako ng Guns N' Roses. As in, ganong levels. Parang, hindi uh, ko ba lang na-vlog? Hindi ko ba lang na-vlog yung on the way sa hospital kasi hindi ko na alam na mga nganak na kapala ako in a few hours. So, they induced me and it was a crazy experience. I'm gonna show you a couple of photos and a, a few videos of how I was pretty much in labor for around 16, 17 hours lang naman. Si 16 hours lang naman, Liam. Okay, so it is... July 1, 2021, at 4.27 in the afternoon. I am currently here at the labor room. I think this is labor room number 5 of Makati Medical Center. I have been officially induced for giving birth because today was just supposed to be my 40th week um, check up. So I am currently 39 weeks and 6 days pregnant with our little boy Liam. Um, he's, his expected due date is uh, tomorrow on July 2. But when my doctor checked me today for the biophysical test, uh, ultrasound and everything, his amniotic fluid was already low which is a cause of concern. So she decided to finally induce me. And since our little boy is pretty big already, and since it's almost his due date na, it felt like the right decision. I just wanted to take this video to look back on. hours all alone because it was COVID so Wancho wasn't allowed inside and apparently there weren't a lot of women giving birth that time as in it was literally just me in the labor area or tas meron ako mga nakikita women who just gave birth and then women who just was coming in but it was just pretty much me I was laboring for 16 to 17 hours if you're pregnant this is probably the part that you want to skip because you might get scared and I'm not gonna say it to scare you it's just my personal experience my camera keeps on moving because Liam is kicking it if you're wondering <laughs> that's, that's what's happening so I got induced and it was so painful like it was such a painful experience and although I knew labor was gonna be painful. I kind of had this hope at the back of my mind na, baka naman hindi ganun kasakit. Baka okay lang yung mga nanay. Nope. Actually, joke time sila magkwento. Kasi sabihin nila, hindi, kaya mo yan, kaya mo yan. Girl, it was so painful. Like, through the roof yung level niya. And, 
I was so scared at some point na masi CS na ako and nothing against women who gave birth through CS. My best friends have given birth through CS. If you pop a baby out of you, you're amazing mama, no matter which way you do it. I just want to say that. Um, but I personally didn't want to get CS just because of how my mom and my grandma and a lot of other people, important people in my life, told me na you don't want to get CS. You should try your best to get your baby out normally. And mind you, I'm going to tell you how big Liam is later, ha? Okay. Anyway, so I was in labor. And for those of you who don't know, you have to be 10 centimeters open. <laughs> Anong tama? Anong word doon? Nakalimutan ko na. Basta dapat 10 cm ka na bago mo magigive birth yung baby. And I kid you not, like from 1 p.m. till around 7 p.m., I was stuck at 2 centimeters. That was it. As in, 2 cm lang. Hindi siya nagpo-progress. So at this point, my OB was had to talk to me and she was like, okay, Joyce, we're monitoring you and Liam closely, but just in case, I want you to know that if anything goes wrong or, hindi yun yung word niya, this is not verbatim, but like, just in case it's needed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to put, wait lang, I'm gonna give water. Hold on, mag water break lang daw yung baby ko. Oh, sige, go. He knows na how to use a sippy cup eh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright. Are you done with drinking water, Sam? Alright. Enough water. Enough water. So, ayun na nga. And, you know, from what I've been preparing for the past few months, I also know that one of the best advice that I've ever gotten from moms and YouTube videos, the courses that I took was, it's so important to not expect too much from your birth experience. Like, like don't get too fixated on, ah, hindi magno-normal ako, ah, hindi magno-natural birth ako, whatever, whatever. Because birthing a baby is no joke. And whatever way you birth your baby, as long as you're both healthy and safe, that's the most important thing. Now, that doesn't discount the fact that some women do experience traumatic birth experiences and you know thank god that's not what i experienced but i think what really helped me during that time was the fact that i wasn't fixated i wasn't fixated on like hindi magno normal birth ako so nung sinabi sa akin nung doctor ko yun na hey i'm just letting you know that we're keeping your safety in mind if push comes to shove kailangan natin mag cs i was okay with that i, I, I was like yeah doc as long as baby is healthy and safe i'm fine so, 2 cm ako till around 8 p.m. And then by midnight, I was like at 4 or 5 pa lang. And parang ako, oh my goodness, sobrang bagal talaga. I was te texting my friends and my family already like, I'm in so much pain, but I'm only at 4 centimeters. I'm gonna ask for an epidural already. Sobrang hirap na hirap na ako. So, anyway, I asked for an epidural at 5 centimeters. And this was around 12 midnight? 12 midnight, 1 a.m. And I'm not blaming the anesthesiologist. Pero kasi, ang tagal. Feeling ko ang tagal, but I'm sure mabilis lang yun. Pero it was in the middle of the night, and the anesthesiologist was on call. And it took a few minutes for, for her to get there. And by the time that she got there, I was like in so much pain. As in, namimilipit na ako sa sakit. I can't explain the the pain. It it was just intense. As in, yun yung totoong namimidipit ka na sa sakit. When I got the epidural though, that was like, fantastic. Wonderful. Anywho, the beautiful thing was, and one of the miracles that I, actually, I experienced obviously a lot of miracles during my birth story. The first one was, I almost had a panic attack. And... It was so hard. If you've ever had a panic attack or if you suffer from anxiety, you know it when it's about to go down, right? Like you can feel the beginning of the wave to explain what anxiety and panic attacks are. It's really an overwhelming tsunami wave that just ganon yung feeling niya and wala kang power. And how I could explain it is the beginning of a panic attack, nakikita mo na yung wave, papalapit na siyang ganyan. And that's what I experienced at around 4 or 5 centimeters because I was in so much pain. And I kept praying. Just thinking about it now, it was really by God's grace. Talaga, I really kept praying. 
one of the things that I prepared for for my birth was um, positive affirmations using Bible verses, uh, looking at imagery that would help me focus on the imagery instead. So like photos of Wancho and myself, photos of the dog, ultrasounds of Liam at that time. And I, I utilize that while praying and doing breathing exercises. Now, if you're pregnant right now or planning on getting pregnant, I absolutely, absolutely suggest that you research on breathing exercises and these imagery stuff and positive affirmations that you can do because it really helped me at that time. It was all by God's grace, obviously, but I think He really helped me by being able to learn those tools beforehand. So, hindi nag-progress yung panic attack ko. Thankfully, I just really talagang nag-focus ako sa breathing ko. I kept on praying. I kept on playing. Because they allow your phone inside the labor room. I kept on playing praise and worship songs, looking at my Bible verses, looking at photos of Wancho and, and the dogs and other things that help me relax. Yung, yung focus na ganon. And we caught the panic attack before it was full-blown. And I got to relax. So, that was the first miracle. The second miracle was, sobrang slow ng progression ko throughout the day, right? I was in labor for 16 hours. And at around 12 midnight, I was kind of accepting na na, okay, mukhang masisiyas na nga ako. So I was kind of like, you know, just, I was still hopeful. I was still praying. And in the back of my head, I was still believing that God will give me the birth experience that I want which is that I've been praying for, which is really a positive, normal birthing experience. Pero, I was like, you know what? If God doesn't give me this, I'm totally fine with it. I completely understand. But I was still texting my family and friends to pray for me. And the second miracle that we experienced that day, Liam and myself, um, was I jumped from 5 cm to straight up 8 and 9 centimeters in like an hour. I said, everyone was... Even the nurses and the doc. So it was like, mga 3 a.m. Umuwi na si doctora. Kasi parang sabi niya, uh, either I'm gonna give you 24 hours um, and we're gonna keep monitoring you. And I'm gonna go back at around, you know, 6 or 7 a.m. to check up on you again. Kasi hindi talaga siya nagpo progress. So parang, medyo na, na realize namin, ah, sige, hindi na to magpo progress. Magpahinga ka na doc. Magpapahinga ko dito. Let's just see where it goes. But like, Big lang at 4 a.m. I was straight up eight centimeters na, and I I told the nurses, na feel ko na parang bumababa na siya, na feel ko na na parang I'm I'm ready to push, I'm ready to push. Ando na ako. So Liam, I guess, was engaged already at that time, and it literally took an hour because I gave birth at 5 a.m. for me to jump from, so parang yung transition from five to eight to ten centimeters happened in a span of two hours and that was such a miracle because that doesn't usually happen so grabe i was praying so hard and another miracle that happened to me was just the peace of god was there when it was time to get rolled into the operating room to finally give birth to liam because i was telling already my doctor that you know she went back already and I was telling her, I'm, I'm ready to push. I can feel it. I'm ready to push. I was just so peaceful. And when I was talking to our pediatrician, actually, after, sabi niya, sobrang surprised daw siya. Kasi usually daw yung mga mommies, nag-hysterical na. Pag ganun na, pag 10 centimeters na. Kasi nga masakit siya. And nakakatakot. As in, nakakatakot. Siyempre, mga nga nakana, diba? You're gonna give birth, you're gonna push, and you're being rolled into an operating room, and you're super aware of everything that's happening. Hindi ko naman tulog, eh. And I was just there, like, I was just smiling. I was like, okay, this is really happening. Ganun yung itsura ko daw. Tapos, she held my hand, and she was like, you're okay? I was like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and I was just doing my breathing exercises. Actually, in hindsight, looking at it now, I was kind of like, a sociopath because I was just neutral. I was just trying to be as neutral as possible. I didn't want to get too excited, too over the top. Like, I didn't want to have too many big emotions. I just wanted to be Rusa. And I kept praying. And I, I really know it was the peace of God that accompanied me in the OR. One of the things that I really prepared for with my therapist because I, I have anxiety and with some of my friends who have given birth was 
really imagery, like really visualizing in my head that, okay, God has me. God holds me in his hands. My therapist said, uh, my, she's my counselor. She said, imagine Jesus is with you in that operating room. You do not have to be afraid. Uh, one of my best friends, Ate Rona, said, Be, siyempre si Ate Rona, Be, huwag kang matakot. Si God magbibigay sa'yo ng lakas ng loob. And that's precisely what happened. So I was rolled into the operating room. Okay, side kwento. Dapat si Wancho yung magkikwento nito eh. I-re-record ko na lang si Wancho na ikikwento to. Side kwento, anong nangyayari kay Wancho when this was happening? Tingnan natin to. <laughs> Alright, so ito po ang aking kwento. Thank you so much Joyce for uh, turning it over to me. Ang aking kwento ay uh, syempre, katulad na napanood nyo, if napanood nyo yung sa vlog ko, I've been... Uh, preparing stuff for the whole day. Siyempre, hindi kasi nihirap ng labor ni Joyce, pero nandun ako. Ang dami kong inaasikaso. I was doing all the hospital things. And when I got to the room nang nasa labor si, uh, si Joyce, mabot na mga 2, 3 a.m. Gising pa rin ako. Kasi siyempre, hindi ako makatulog during that time. Uh, when they finally called me, ng uh, a certain amount of centimeters na dilated na si Joyce which means malapit na siya mga anak they called me into this parang waiting area kung saan naglagay ako ng mga PPE uh, hairnet mga ganon P, uh, PPE for footsie uh, footsie. <laughs> footsie yung mga pang cover sa shoes and everything and I stayed there mga halos 2 hours I was playing Mobile Legends. I was uh, sleep deprived already. And it's a funny story. And si Joyce always makes fun of me for this story. Anyway, uh, I was there. Puyat na puyat na ako. And may lumapit sa akin isang, isang tao. Okay, sabi niya, Hi Wancho, I'm your pedia. And she's like late 40s. Yun yun. And I said, How did you remember? <laughs> <laughs> puwet na puwet na pala ako noon at hindi ko alam na or hindi ko na natandaan na kaya nga pala ako nandun sa lugar na yon dahil mga anak ng asawa ko at kailangan namin ng pedia for my son not for me for my son so anyway she didn't mind it but mind you they did make fun of me after and uh, pagkatapos noon I got to witness Joyce push our baby out for the last two minutes and uh, I froze. I did not faint. I did not cry. I just froze. Literally did not get to take any pictures when it was happening. Did not get to touch Joyce or show emotional support or whatsoever. I did not get to say anything. I just froze. And then, pagkatapos nun, binigay na si Liam kay Joyce at hindi ko alam kung kaya ko hawakan si Liam at etc. Et After a moment na yun, pinalis ako sa kwarto and na ko na yung sarili ko. And then, yun, nawakan ko na si Liam. So, that's the end of our birth story. Back to you, Joyce. Okay, now that you know the pediatrician story, back to me pushing an 8-pound baby out. So, I was pushing for maybe like 20 to 25 minutes. And it was the hardest part of the labor. Kasi, I, I didn't know how to push. And there were a lot of people there, and of course your OB was there, the pediatrician was there, the anesthesiologist was there. And I pushed for 25 minutes, and finally, Liam was out into the world. It was July 2, 2021 at 5.40 in the morning on a Friday. Unang hirit baby nga siya dahil uh, Ganun yung timeline namin pag unang hirit. That's the start of the show. And he was out right in time for the start of the show. Okay. Uh, I thought this, this was gonna be short, but here I am talking. I don't even have the words to explain or describe what birthing a person is like. It's one of the most spiritual experiences I've ever had. One, because I was just praying so hard. Two, because me, as a person who has a soul, is giving birth to another person who has a soul. 
it's mind blowing. It's a mind blowing experience. And uh, Mahati Med has this wonderful thing where once the baby is out, the first thing that happens is they place the baby on your chest. And di ko miya, pero I don't know what I was feeling. I was just so incredibly joyful and I couldn't believe that Liam was finally there. Tapos nag breastfeed na kaagad siya and then he was taken away to be clean. I was rolled out of the operating room. I lost a lot of blood because I had to be, there was some tearing and I had to be cut down there. Oh my gosh. It has been a roller coaster ride since then. We stayed in the hospital for three days just for routine checkups and to recover a little bit. And yeah, it just flew by. Now Liam is seven months old and marunong na siyang magbasa. <laughs> Magta TED talk na siya next week. What is it like? What was it like giving birth? That's, that's what it was like. And it's been overwhelming. Honestly, the pregnancy, the birthing experience, the labor, everything is nothing compared to actually having to parent a human being and be a mom. And it's been the most overwhelming thing I've ever had to go through. Postpartum was the most difficult. As in, those first three weeks of postpartum was the hardest. So if there's anything that I want to give to you from this vlog, advice it would be this first find health professionals and doctors that understand what you want what you need as a pregnant woman our doctor my ob dr john de grano was amazing is amazing and she, she we were on the same page which was so important second super prepare for labor like read as much as you can Surround yourself with positive birthing experiences. Don't watch birthing videos on YouTube. Not a good idea. Don't listen to negative birthing experiences. Not a good idea. But just educate yourself as much as possible. Um, prepare everything. So like, I had a lot of... All of the things that Wancha needed, all of the things that I needed, I packed and was ready to go at around 32 weeks or earlier. Because I was just doing nothing at home, you know? I was pregnant, so I just just prepare everything beforehand and ask help from a lot of people. Really, that the grace of God surpasses all our expectations. As in, grabe yung grace ni God. Yung na-experience ko throughout my pregnancy, labor, and delivery, it was crazy. So, trust in God because He will really protect you. And my goodness, He loves us so much. And finally, super prepare for the first month after giving birth because that's the hardest. If you want me to talk about my postpartum experience in those first four weeks, please let me know. I would love to share it, but this vlog has taken too long and I need to close it. So, you guys, that's my birth story! Mic drop. I don't know what I add to that, but that's it. Hopefully, it's something that entertained you i don't know if it's gonna be helpful to anybody but let me know what else you want to know about my birth story and everything that happened and what else you want to see on the vlog all right guys bye bye see you on the next one you want to say bye to the vlog say bye vlog oh yeah bye uh...